before I watched this movie, I was told by the person who recommended it that the answer to everything, everything in the universe, is 42. So, I guess, spoiler alert? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, released in 2005 and is directed by Garth Jennings, who has also directed such films like Son of Rambo and the movie Sing. And this movie has a pretty big all-star cast of Martin Freeman, Sam Rockwell, Most Def, Zoe Deschanel, Bill Nighy, Anna Chancellor, John Malkovich, and the voices of Stephen Fry, Helen Murren, Thomas Lennon, Bill Bailey, and Alan Rickman. Mere seconds before the Earth is to be demolished by an alien construction crew, our hero of the story, Arthur Dent, played by Martin Freeman, is swept off the planet by his friend Ford Prefect, played by Most Def, who is a researcher penning a new edition of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And while they are bouncing from a space ship to spaceship and planet to planet, joined forces with the President of the Galaxy, played by Sam Rockwell, and Trillian, played by Zoe Deschanel, who Arthur has a huge crush on. And all of them are seeking the universe for the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. So this movie was recommended to me by one of my co-workers, Josh Buck, who was asking me, so are you going to recommend The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because your 420th episode is coming up? And, I mean, you could go one of two ways about it. You could do Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy that deals with the answer of 42, which I don't know, like, why that's the answer, but it's the answer to the, the whole life question. Or you could go down another path and have an edible and review a movie. And I guess, sadly, now that I'm thinking about it, I chose the number answer as opposed to the edible answer. Oh, well, it'll eventually happen sometime. Maybe that could be a fun live stream. I can have my first edible and watch a movie and all of you can watch me freak out and watch a movie. It's got to be like a horror movie like Jaws or something like that. I think that's the biggest reason why I've never been high or had an edible. It's because I'm afraid of how I'm going to act. Because I feel like I would just find a corner somewhere and go, <laughs> But we're moving on from that because I chose to be the responsible person and watch The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. A movie that I had seen previews for growing up in the early 2000s and I'd heard about this film. And I thought for sure... That Christopher Lloyd was in this movie. I know it's Christopher Lloyd, but I like saying both L's in the name because I think it's funny, and I know the Ninjago movie did that, and I think it's a really funny joke, so I'm going to keep saying that going forward. Christopher Lloyd, deal with it. But apparently, I am way off on that. Ever happened to you before where you're thinking about a movie or you're questioning about a movie and you are for sure set that one person is starring in it, and then you actually watch the damn thing and they're not there? I, I feel crazy. But to my sweet surprise, we actually get Martin Freeman, who is an actor that I think is an absolute delight in everything that he does. And he plays the, really the, the kind of the same character as he typically does. That bumbling, awkward little dude who really doesn't have any direction in life going for him at all, but still holding on to small, stupid stuff, but not making a commitment to asking a girl out or going on an adventure. But then guess how this movie starts? Goes on an adventure, right? I'm going on an adventure! See? Now the main thing that pops into my head after watching this movie is just thinking how strange this movie is. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just really weird because it approaches this big question, this overall question, what's the meaning of life, what's the answer to life, creation, and everything in the universe, it approaches it from a very scientific standpoint, as opposed to looking for meaning in life through religion, which many people will find solace and peace in knowing that religion is answering that question for them. But for me, that's that's not enough. I'd rather prefer to have scientific evidence or a scientific answer as to what the answer to that question is. And apparently here, there's a big supercomputer that they ask, what's the meaning of life? And several million years, they come back and she finally has an answer of 42. And... <laughs> I don't know what that means or how they came to that number or that answer, but I kind of like that. In other words, at least how I'm interpreting it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> why are you asking that question and why are you searching for an answer to that question? It doesn't 
fucking matter. And when we get to the final chapters of this film, the final act, we see Martin Freeman, Arthur Dent, realizing and discovering and learning just how insignificant he is in the universe. The universe is so vast and so large, and time itself, even though it's relative, goes on and on and on, never ending. So how arrogant and how big-headed is it of you to ask the question, what's the meaning of life, when you are just a, a dust fragment in the whole concept of what the universe is? And I think many people out there, when they realize that, would succumb to fear, anxiety, and probably depression, but for me, I guess it's a little comforting to realize that the problems that I'm having, or at least that I think are a big deal in my world and in my head, really mean nothing in the grand scheme of everything, if there is a grand scheme of something. That is basically the message of this film. You shouldn't go through life looking for the answer as to what the meaning of your life is. You should just live through your life explore, go on adventures, challenge yourself, stop focusing on finding meaning in what you're doing, just do it. Do something. And I really enjoy that. That's really the big hang-up that I have on this movie, is that I'm focusing on the message and the story here and the purpose of why this movie exists. When we get to the technical aspects of this film, it kind of just went over my head because I wasn't really paying that much attention to it. I do like the puppetry work that we get here. The Vagon race, I believe is how they pronounced it. These big, overweight, disgusting, kind of like mutant slugs and how their faces just droop and their bellies hang all the way to the ground. I love the puppetry work on them. I love the allegory that they represent for democracy and bureaucracy. Yes, we want to help you, but you need to fill out this form and then bring it back and then we may need to stamp it, sending off to this other office, and they need to plant it down in the ground and spout a tree. And then when the tree bears fruit, then we can sign that form and then we can assist you. For any of you out there that have ever gone to the DMV, you know the frustration of that whole process. Sam Rockwell is here and he's an absolute delight as the president of the entire galaxy, the entire universe, which I want to know how, how you're voted on that, because he did run against John Malkovich's character and ended up losing. But I feel like his interpretation of the president of the universe was very much a impersonation of George W. Bush, who would have been president at that time, who would then later on to be George W. Bush in the movie Vice a couple of years ago. His, his George Bush is pretty spot on. And then Zoe Deschanel is here, and I'm starting to realize that uh, Zoe Deschanel, there's really nothing special, at least in my opinion, about her acting, about her performances. She is very one note to me. She always plays the wide-eyed, monotone speaking, quirky, outgoing girl in everything that she does. When she popped up on screen here, I was thinking, oh, you're probably going to be this type of person. Oh, look at that, you are. Cool. To me, the big thing going for this movie is the message of what it's promoting. It's promoting to just live your life and not try to look at the meaning behind what you're doing and the things that you are doing. It's just, hey, just be present and just do things as opposed to thinking about doing things or thinking why you're going to be doing things. That doesn't matter. It's the doing that you need to do. Do. And it does it through a very scientific way, which I really appreciate. Taking the religion stuff, if you find solace in it, fine. But for me, put that aside. I don't care about that because I know they're all kind of stories made up. Oh boy, I'm going to get a lot of comments for that one. But I like the scientific approach that we get here. If you're going to watch this movie, please know it's very weird. It's very strange. It feels very British to me, which might have something to do with Martin Freeman being the lead, which that's totally okay, but there is a, a, a class, a sophistication to the comedy in this movie that feels very British to me. Is it something that I'm going to go back and watch constantly on repeat? No, but if it's on or if I ever get the urge to watch it, it's not something that I'm going to deny myself of, and yeah, I think it's a good recommend for people. I'm going to give The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 3.5 out of 5 Blu-rays. All right, everyone, now comes my favorite part of my videos where I pick which movie I'm going to be watching next, and we're going to be selecting randomly from the list of all the recommendations that I've gotten from fans and subscribers over the years, because it is July, and I'm trying to do a big subscriber recommendation month, so let's take a look. 
The Adventures of Tintin, recommended by AJB, who I know, this recommendation, I think, came in, like, years ago, like two or three years ago, and I've been waiting for this to show up so I can watch it because I've never seen it before, but I have heard a lot of good things. And I believe it's a Peter Jackson movie, but it's all done CGI. I think this was like the beginning of the big like, motion capture where we take an actual actor's face and CGI it, put it animated onto a character, and then it's, it's going to look very strange and weird, kind of like Beowulf. I think that's what it is. I could be completely wrong on that, though. I'm just going off of memory. But we'll check out The Adventures of Tintin next time. If any of you have recommendations of films that you want me to review on here, you can make a PayPal donation on the main page of my YouTube channel. Any size donation will do. Just attach your movie recommendation with your donation. And if I have access to it, I will watch it, review it, give you a shout out on the channel, and get my review of it published as quickly as I possibly can. So guys, if you've seen The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, what did you think about it or if you've never seen it before and you stumbled across it because of this video then comment below let me know what you thought about it and as always if you like what you see here if you like my take on movies then hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that bell so you know the next time i release my next movie review so guys i will see you next time with my review of the adventures of tintin so in the meantime be well be good to each other and go watch a movie take care guys